There are mini consoles and then there is this, a fully functional hand-built Dreamcast Mini powered by a Raspberry Pi 5. Now it looks incredible, it runs like a dream, and it's one of the most impressive custom builds I've ever owned. Now I picked this up from Rob, a designer, builder, and the one-man team behind Multi-Game System. He designs and builds small batches of custom minigame systems with a crazy level of attention to detail. He handles everything himself, CAD designs, 3D printing, finishing, and even the custom electronics. Now he's not running a full-time storefront, but he does make small batches from time to time. If you're curious or want to see more of his work, I'll leave links to his Instagram and some of his other socials in the description down below. From the outside, this looks like it could have been made by Sega themselves. The case is fully 3D printed and finished to a high standard. It's sanded, primed, and painted. Every part of the shell was designed from scratch in CAD using Autodesk Fusion. All of the front facing logos are custom water slide decals and the Dreamcast swirl on the lid is a UV printed badge, which has almost like a slight glittery base to it. It is subtle, but it really pops when the light hits it just right. Now you've got four USB B ports on the front that mimic the original console layout and on the back, two HDMI out ports, clean ventilation, and your main USB-C power port. Even the modem bay functions. It opens up and gives you quick access to the micro SD card slot on the Pi 5, a really thoughtful feature that makes working with this device much easier. Now inside this thing, as I've said, is running a Raspberry Pi 5, and I've got the four gigabyte model in here. That's gonna give you a big step up in both performance and compatibility over older Pi builds. There's a main CPU fan with a heat sink, plus an exhaust fan that that pushes warm air out through the side of the case, just like on the original Dreamcast. And both are temperature controlled, so they ramp up and down as needed. The front USBs work thanks to a custom GPIO USB hub interface PCB Rob designed and built himself. It also supports Bluetooth and wireless controllers and the main power switch supports safe shutdown and standby modes. Compared to the Pi 4, you're getting a huge bump in CPU and GPU power. Load times are faster, emulators run smoother, and compatibility with Dreamcast and other high-end systems is way better. There's also a ton of community support which makes customizing your setup a lot easier. Whether you're using Batocera, Recallbox, Emu Elec, or RetroPie when Pi 5 support is fully rolled out. Now you can also use it for streaming, desktop work, or custom front-end builds. It's powerful and it's a flexible platform. Now let's go ahead and talk about performance because that's what really matters here. Dreamcast emulation on the Pi 5 is excellent. Most games run full speed using emulators like Flycast on RetroArch and everything feels smooth across the board. Now I've included a little bit of gameplay footage so you can see how it performs. The FPS counters are gonna be visible where possible so you can get a realistic sense of how it handles various titles.
even more demanding games like ones that gave the Pi 4 some trouble actually play really well on the Pi 5, especially with the cooling in this build keeping temps under control. The system can even output at 4K resolution, though depending on the game and emulator, you may need to dial it back for smoother results. Now, just for comparison, I actually have one of the older Odroid C4 versions that I picked up from Rob a little while back. That one was more of a DIY kit, and while it's still really cool, it did require you to paint and solder and pretty much assemble everything yourself. Now, obviously the Odroid is a bit outdated at this point and the kit was more of a prototype than anything else. So you can definitely see just how far things have come. The Pi 5 version feels like a complete and polished product and it's no longer just a functional prototype. Now, honestly, I'm completely blown away by the level of care and craftsmanship that went into this. Every detail from the port layout to the cooling system feels purposeful. Even the little things like the modem bay doubling as a micro SD card access door shows you just how much thought went into the design. And to that point, check out the custom Dreamcast boot animation. Now Rob actually created this from scratch using Illustrator and After Effects. It's not just a stock emulator animation or just a video he ripped from online. He actually built this from the ground up. Just a great example of the level of polish he puts into these builds. So if you're interested in seeing more, check out Multigame System on Instagram. He doesn't mass produce these, but he does make some small batches. So if you're curious, that's the best place to reach out to see if he has any available. I love seeing passion projects like this brought to life, so a big shout out to Rob at Multi Game Solutions. But that's all I've got for you guys in this video. Thank you so very much for watching, I'll speak to you guys again real soon.